At anchor off the coast of Tonga, just outside the city of Nuka Alofa, a peaceful little spot. It's amazing what you can see some days just from the deck of your boat. Well, it's another working day here on Shadi. There's people all around me on other boats working, getting themselves ready for the next part of the journey down south. Been an odd week for me, a sad week really. A friend of mine had a, a tragedy in his family, uh, a loss of someone very dear and uh, a young person. And it, uh, it was bad for uh, him, of course, and his family and his friends. We all shared his grief. And uh, he, it's, it sort of goes to remind you reminds me of uh, how lucky I am that we shouldn't put things off um, if you have a dream or something you want to do do it don't put it off life is not forever and be thankful for what you have and stop wishing for things you don't have that's that's the main lesson of that so anyway on our way to New Zealand and New Zealand uh, they have laws down there that are very very strict bio laws the bottom of the boat has to be squeaky clean they don't want any bio contamination from uh, having a dirty bottom and i'm talking about the bottom the bottom of the boat here so stop laughing um so i've got to clean it myself because none of the yards around here could take shaddy uh, she draws too much water um so it's on with the tank and get down there and scrub i used to do this for a living so let's hope i can remember uh, tank facing away from you uh, get your it's called in England a BCD or in most, most of the world a stab jacket uh, have that on there like that about so high will do it work the strap till it's tight that's tight <laughs> that's very tight at this point, it's probably a good idea to check the O-ring, uh, which makes the seal between uh, the pillar valve here and the first stage, which is going to go on here. This is the regulator, the first stage uh, regulator and the second stage regulator, which goes in your mouth and a contents and depth gauge. Again, working from behind the unit, going to put the first stage on to the tank or if you're English, a bottle. I never quite understood why they call it a bottle in English. I've always called it a tank. After connecting the jacket inflator unit uh, to its hose, it's time to turn the tank on. But before we do that, we're going to take the contents gauge and turn it away from us and hold it away from us. That's because if this blows out when this pressure is turned on, it can do you a lot of damage. There's a lot of pressure in this stuff. There you go, that's on. Turn it all the way back and then one turn back again. Okay, there we go. We've got 150 bar. This tank's not full. It's okay, I actually did know that the tank wasn't uh, all the way full, but now I've confirmed it, so I know exactly how much air I've got down there. The next thing to do is to smell the air for the regulator to make sure that it's no nasties or uh, exhaust fumes or anything like that. Uh, we should do more of this on another video sometime, but uh, right now it's time to get under the boat and do some work. I'm not looking for The water's actually quite cold here. <laughs> I don't want to get in there. I suppose I've got to do it, haven't I? Yeah. Put my wetsuit on, that'll help. I actually bought this in the Caribbean, I guess, 20, 25 years ago, and it still fits me. Yeah. Of course, the belly bit sticks out a bit more than it used to. Yeah, after 25 years, that still fits. If you have a problem with a constantly fogging mast, I found that uh, this stuff, it's toothpaste, does the trick. Just wipe it around inside, smear it all around, make sure it gets all over the glass uh, and you'll find that it, it does work. You have to make sure you wash most of it away. Wash that out. 
I guess you could use fresh water. I use seawater here. Uh, wash that out again now, but uh, don't get any finger grease in there. Uh, you need to do it, otherwise you're going to get toothpaste up your nose while you're diving, but that does work. And what's the best thing for having after an early morning dive? Well, that would be a bacon and egg breakfast. Another trip to town, just got back and another dinghy load of supplies for the trip ahead. The further west you go in the Pacific, the more and more difficult it is to buy things. I wasn't sure what to expect on my next part of my voyage, so decided to stock up with things while I could get them here in Tonga. A lot of people leaving today. There's a definite change in the weather. Thought I'd give you a bit of a heads up. You're looking at uh, New Zealand here with all kinds of shenanigans going on, a lot of windy weather down that way. Just to get your bearings, here again is New Zealand. Uh, we've got Australia down, on the, down off the left there. This is the Pacific Ocean. The United States is 4,000 miles that way. And we are about there, Anuka Alofa Tonga. And we're trying to get down here. And there's been an awful lot of bad weather down here recently, an awful lot. One boat was actually lost, and they, I believe a guy was killed uh, just uh, just over two weeks ago. Um, and now it's perfect. You can see the wind is just pushing you down onto New Zealand. And the way to get to New Zealand is you have to go over west and then follow it down, not too far east, as you end up in this blank spot here. But it does change through uh, through every day. Um, so um, keeping an eye on it. But that weather's a lot better than it has been for the last month. This is actually uh, next Monday, a close-up of New Zealand. There's North Island there. There's the gap there by Wellington and South Island here. And you can see this stuff. This is all coming up from the South Pole. Uh, and it's cold wind but yeah a bit roughy tufty this is the sort of thing you want to keep clear of uh, we're actually going here uh, up in the north so uh, it doesn't look too bad at the moment bit of a lonely anchorage this morning a lot of boats have left we're spinning lazily around at anchor but as you can see I think there's uh, about six or seven of us here now. There were uh, over 25 at one point. My buddy boat Iris is over there behind that big boat. It was raining quite hard last night, so I collected some water in the dinghy, and that in turn has uh, helped me do a bit of laundry, <laughs> which is now drying on the side. Gotta say though, the weather's not looking too good up there. Uh, might get a bit of rain later on, so better get that stuff in. We are doing some diving off the boat yesterday uh, to get the hull clean. Uh, my regulator decided to start leaking on me. Not this one, this is a replacement one. Um, so I've got to have a look at that later. This place just reminds me of some of the adventure stories I read as a lad like Treasure Island. <laughs> I'm trying to take do a shot and the boat is just wandering off by itself like this. Does it all the time. Because we've got quite a bit of chain out, so uh, there's a bit of play along the bottom. She's just turning and twisting. Oh, I think I'll go over here for a bit now. Shaddy, please turn it away. I was filming and you ruined my shot. Okay, I'll go back. Oh, she's turning back now. Look, 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 look. Going back the other way. Every day I come on deck and I see this beautiful vista. A beautiful island reminds me of the islands I read about in my uh, youth. Treasure Island, for example, a deserted island. But if you were to be trapped on this particular deserted island and ran out of food, it's no worries, because it has a bar. Coffee's on the go. Nothing happens aboard this boat without coffee first. The last two eggs. Bacon in the pan. I've had bacon for the last three mornings. We could actually buy bacon here. Just love the stuff. Anyway, that's the last of it. Gotta go shopping. Tomorrow's Monday, uh, shopping day. More bacon day. Ooh. Looks like it's gonna be a nice, nice day for doing work on the deck today. The big mama's ferry is taking somebody ashore, although it looks like there's nobody on board. Uh, they get a lot of people come to the island. Uh, tourists from the mainland come out here and uh, spend the day. 
I guess if you're not used to this, this is paradise. I have to kick myself every morning. I come up on deck and I just look at this and I'm thinking, oh, oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's my friends on their boat, Iris. And uh, apart from, I think, two other boats, there's nobody here. Everybody's gone south. It doesn't look it with all this beautiful weather, but the cyclone season is coming. Summer is coming and with it, the cyclone season. And a very dangerous time for boats. Well, that's enough yap yap for a while. Let's take a look around the island and inside Big Mama's Yacht Club. Today I'm working with the ever-present problem of the forced day. You may remember on my epic journey across the Pacific, this pin uh, which holds the whole forced day uh, to this lug that's welded to the deck uh, worked its way out because the cotter pin, which should be in that little hole there, uh, broke um, because of wear and tear. The whole unit moves and flexes. It's designed to do it that way, that's why it's got this fork arrangement here. But um, the pin is too small so I'm going to try and uh, it take me ages to get it this is the second one this is the one I replaced and for this last trip we're looking at some bad weather so I thought I better replace it again um, and so I took it out it took me ages to get out though I've got some better sized uh, cotter pins here but the holes too small I know it's stainless steel but I'm see if I can ream it out just half a millimeter to get a better sized cotter pin in there uh, I need that to turn the uh, the main pin to get the uh, the holes lined up. I know people will be saying, Barry, why do you get the job done properly? Well, I am uh, in New Zealand again. Remember, I've been coming across the Pacific side of the world. You cannot get things. I cannot get cotter pins. I cannot get securing pins, rigging wire, anything. So I'm having to make do. But the, the job will be done properly soon. Okay, so it's half an hour later. And in just trying to get another half millimeter on that hole to get a bigger pin in, I broke the drill bit and it's stuck in there. So I'm having to drill it out with another one. I know this is stainless steel, but I was hoping to skim out the hole just slightly. I'd done it before on other jobs, but... Uh, so now I've got another problem. I've got a drill bit stuck in there. So I think it's probably time to stop and have a beer. Yeah, maybe I'll go to the pub tonight and I'll worry about all this in the morning. I've had enough. That's the thing about boats. You can only do one job a day. It's taken me half a day to not actually finish the job of just replacing one cotter pin. Um, so there you go. Definitely beer clock. Got all my stuff for sure. Uh, a light for if I come back when it's dark. Um, and a can of road soda. Uh, yes, it's a lovely, beautiful day. And it's the end of a working day, and I'm hot, and here's a cold beer.
Look at you with your dogs. <laughs> These for sure were island dogs. Uh, there were quite a few of them that used to hang out at Big Mama's and they all had great personalities and they kind of talked to the, uh, each other in their own language but also had an uncanny liking for my crutch. These guys all want my testicles. No, get off my balls. Get my balls, dogs. Look at that. Some home improvements going on, putting some glass in. Not sure it's a good idea just before cyclone season, but there you go. Time to kick back, even the dogs are relaxed. The evening was upon us, time for a few beers. These are the moments that money just can't buy. You're on the other side of the world, miles from home, but you're with friends. It's like being at home, chillaxing, taking it easy, talking of plans, where to sail next, what to do. The topic was all about the cyclone season. We were coming to it and we had to leave. This was going to be a bad place for boats in just a few weeks time. And we were making our plans to go down south to New Zealand. My thoughts, however, lay in another direction. Back the way I'd come from. Back home. Some friends of mine had just lost their son. He'd had a very, very rare form of cancer, blood cancer, and had been battling for the last three years. But finally, the disease had taken him. His father later told me that when things had been bad, they used to stay indoors and watch old sea dog videos. That really, really touched me. So I was sorry to hear the news of his passing. Oliver was only 11 years old, and this video is for him. As the poet Longfellow once said, on the ocean of life, we are all but ships that pass in the night. <laughs>